uh, elaborate by supergroups of uh, type SLMN and associated to a three manifold. And I will consider three manifolds, uh, compact oriented three manifolds of, uh, uh, of a particular class. And conjecturally, this uh, Q series uh, has the following physics interpretation. So, up to possibly some overall uh, universal normalization, the, uh, the conjecture is they should be equal to a trace of a Hilbert space uh, of a certain quantum si system, or in other words, to a, a Q, uh, Q flavored uh, index uh, of, the of the following system of M5 brains. So, uh, we start. Uh, uh, we start with M theory on a total space of a Kalanjian bundle of a three manifold, and we take it a product uh, with C squared, which uh, we actually want to keep with tau not metric times S1. And we want to put uh, uh, M copies uh, of M5 brain on M3 times uh, C times origin of the other C, and M copies of M5 brains on M3 times uh, origin times the other C. And this uh, L0 inserted in a trace over the Hilbert space is a generator of rotation of uh, the C, of, of both Cs in opposite directions. And uh, as I will briefly review this uh, system by the C, C, this M series set up by, 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 by duality is, is related to a, a supergroup Chan Simons, supergroup SRM and Chan Simons theory on M3. And uh, I will, uh, so I will, I will consider various examples and uh, also uh, some properties of this Q series, in particular the resolutions properties. And I will also uh, make a statement, uh, also it's a conjecture, what is, uh, uh, what, uh, how these uh, Q series are related to a certain uh, known invariance, known quantum invariance of three manifolds, and these are invariants of a type considered by Castatino, Gear, and Potero Miran. And so these are uh, not uh, the usual envir quantum environments associated to model tensor categories, but they are rather associated to a certain non simple category of uh, representations. Uh, in our case, it's a representation of a certain uh, what is called unrolled version of uh, quantum SLM MN with a modified trace, and uh, we want to take Q to at full affinity. Actually, I will focus uh, mainly on the on the case when m equals two and n equals one, which is the simplest non-trivial example. And this was worked uh, relatively recently in in a work by Ha. Uh, this application of this more general construction. And uh, so, let me mention. So, in a sense, this is a generalization. Uh, so, so, of a work already done for the case of ordinary uh, groups S U N, and also to some extent uh, to U one. Uh, uh, bar one. So for S U N case is just when we, do, we only have M N and five brains, but we don't have any anything here. Okay. So before uh, proceeding to uh, reviewing so, uh, doing short review of supergroup John Simons and its brain realization, let me first review the brain realization of the ordinary S U N John Simons. So this can be uh, realized uh, by considering a system of n d3 brains uh, supported on three manifolds times uh, half line, and they end uh, at an NS5 brain. And uh, so there is a, the, the word volume here on leaving all these d3 brains is a, a maximum expression of young mills with a certain coupling constant tau. And at the minus, at the infinity, here we want to impose a, a condition that the, uh, the gauge fields approach a certain flat connection. And then there is a statement uh, uh, that uh, made by Witten in particular that the uh, such the partition function of such system. Uh, so we also need to do perform a topological twist around M3, uh, along M3. So the statement that the partition function of the system realizes a sort of analytic generation version of John Simon's theory, where the uh, the yeah, Mills coupling is defined with the level analytic continued level. And uh, this partial function realizes uh, so the pass integral over a certain contour known as left sheet symbol associated to uh, this particular flat connection. But then one can uh, do, do a S duality to, uh, to in, in type two base here to replace this uh, brain to D5 brain. And then, but this actually will uh, transform, in general, will transform them trivially as these uh, conditions uh, on the field, boundary conditions at infinity. 
And then first one can make a, a T duality to type 2A. So instead of D3 brains, we will have D4 brains uh, on M3 times half line times this one, and they will end on D6 brain. And then the system can be lifted to uh, M3 area where uh, now the half line is lifted to a, to a, to a cigar. And uh, uh, so the, the, the cigar can be used as a circle vibration over plus with the circle being a M0 circle. And uh, uh, yeah, so this, uh, to be precise, this cigar is a cigar uh, inside a tub nut space. And uh, so in this setup, the uh, Q is exponentiated acquiring parameter responding to rotation of this cigar when we go around this one. And Q is related to transient continuous sign coupling as, uh, by the following relation. Now, uh, this can be uh, generalized to a supergroup version. It's just that we don't have only these brains on one side, we also put these brains on the other side. And uh, essentially we do, uh, we can make the same sequence of dualities and we end up uh, instead in M series, instead we have N M5 brains wrapping one cigar and M M5 brains wrapping the other cigars and this cigar, like you can imagine, so they touch here, and uh, but they actually, uh, intersect, they actually intersect transversely in a tau knot space. Uh, yeah, two copies. If we uh, answer tau knot as uh, C2, they just uh, 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 C1 uh, one, one wraps one copy of C and the other wraps another copy. And uh, okay, let me also mention as a kind of part of animation that this uh, kind of supergroup transignments is a. Uh, uh, kind of physically important object is this also appears, for example, in the uh, in the sort of relation to a BGM sphere on a three sphere. So the, probably the most well kind of understood version is uh, for when the, when the when the group is U one uh, bar one, and as was shown uh, in particular by Razansky Salur, this transignments uh, uh, the corresponding uh, partition function of this transignment sphere. Uh, is equal, uh, can be identified with the uh, Redmeister derived torsion on a 3 micro. And in turn, the Redmeister derived torsion can be uh, identified with the ubiquitin variance, as it was showed by Mink Tops. Here, I mean uh, three dimensional ubiquitin variance. And what is nice about this case, uh, here it is known uh, both for invariance of three manifolds and, uh, and nodes, because when the variance nodes, it's known how to categorize this invariance. In particular, one would write the following table. So the corresponding variance, uh, of nodes here is the Alexander polynomial and its classification is not like homology. And similarly, as, as a derivation for three manifold invariants is monopole for homology or equivalently Hibbert for homology. And it's also actually can be extended to, uh, to invariants of four manifolds, which are four dimensional that make invariants. And so in a sense that this, uh, uh, so roughly this uh, homology can be sort of the Hilbert space of the corresponding four dimensional TPFT on a uh, three manifold. So kind of the, the bish, it would be uh, to, to have this, to fill this table also for SU2 group, for which we know some parts. So we know what is the invariance of for nodes, it's a John color, John polynomial, and it's, it's known this classification is havana Krasansky homology, and we know the invariance of three manifolds, so we don't actually have to write invariance, but it's not, I mean, there are some physics proposals about what should be here, uh, but they're not, uh, uh, yeah, they're not mathematically so far well-defined, and, uh, even on, even on computational level, it's not clear how to, in general, do this, I mean, how to calculate them, even from physics point of view. So in a sense, this is, as a part of motivation, one can try to, uh, to consider the simplest supergroup, which includes both cases, which unify, uh, in a sense unifies them. And uh, uh, so the hope that maybe this is, uh, uh, kind of can bridge these two, um, uh, these two cases. This is, this is just a part uh, of motivation. So I will be interested in considering the following uh, uh, class of uh, three manifolds, uh, which are called pl uh, spun, usually referred to spun manifolds. So they can be uh, combinatorially described by a plumbing graph. This will be a graph uh, for, for, for which each vertex has an integer label, AI here, and the corresponding manifold uh, can be understood as a dense order on a link associated to this graph in the following simple way. So for each node, we can see the unknot, which is uh, for, for, for which it's actually framed unknot, for, for which the framing is, is uh, 
given by uh, specified by, by the corresponding integer number. And this unknown, a bunch of unknowns, they are linked in a way uh, as this graph. So for each edge means that the unknowns are linked in the simplest possible way. And uh, so let me, let me briefly remind you what is a dense surgery. So dense surgery is, uh, so, we, so for each uh, link component, we cut out its uh, tubular neighborhood. So we get something with the torus boundary. And then for each of these uh, torus boundary, to each of these torus boundary, we, we glue uh, a, a, another copy of the solid torus using uh, the following uh, SL2D transformation, where AI is uh, uh, specified by, uh, uh, by this integer framing numbers. And uh, so, so in the follows, I will do by L the number of vertices in this plumbing graph. And uh, uh, so it's important quantity associated to this graph is L by L linking matrix. So it's just equal to one if uh, two vertices are connected and uh, it's equal for, for diagonal elements, they're just given by the framing numbers, integer framing numbers and zero is zero as well. And in particular, uh, the, then the first homology group of this uh, three manifold obtained by the surgery can be identified with the kernel this matrix M. And in the follows, actually, I will, I will consider only uh, three graphs. And moreover, I will assume that this is a, the manifold is a rational homology sphere. So the first bit number is zero. And the, in particular, this means that M is invertible over rational numbers. Okay. So let me, before, before uh, going to uh, super, uh, Q series associated to manifolds and supergroups, let me uh, briefly review uh, the Q series associated to ordinary groups and uh, uh, the three manifolds uh, of a type of plumbing graph. So they were uh, considered uh, in a paper by Gukov, Pei, Wafa, and uh, myself. And there was given the following uh, uh, formula in terms of the this plumbing data, what, what would be this uh, the hat series associated to a ordinary, uh, ordinary algebra. And uh, uh, so they're given by the following, uh, one can write the following integral formula. And so for each vertex there is a, a, one can use a, a single variable that I, and then one, uh, the integral contains the following rational function of the set i's, and then we multiply by theta function associated to a, a quadratic form, which is uh, two mi minus two m. M is a linking number, is a, is a linking matrix. Uh, so in particular, this is a, uh, uh, and the integral, so of course, the, in principle, there are some singularity, and one has to choose how to avoid the singularity in this contour. And uh, uh, here one can make uh, what is called uh, principal value uh, prescription, which means we, take an average of, uh, uh, of, of, of all possibilities. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is uh, readily well-defined if M, for example, is negative definite. So this, this set of function is a convergent. But in principle, this can be generalized as was well generalized uh, for the case of what is called weakly negative definite. And uh, um, also, let me know, so, so these are hats, so in general they have labels, so it's not a single Q series, it's a, it's a family of Q series. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the brain pictures are associated to the, some choices of boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, as was clarified in, in, the, in the paper by Gukov and Monoleth, they actually more naturally labeled uh, by a set of spin structures on the three manifolds, which can be uh, identified with the co-kernel of 2M uh, with the elements of coherent of 2M to so define a certain parity condition. In any case, so what, what uh, yeah, what, this was a brief review. So what I'm actually interested in, uh, in constructing something similar for, uh, for the case of uh, supergroup in particular SU2 bar one. And so in this case, uh, the generalization is the following. And uh, uh, so first of all, let me mention, so yeah, even, uh, even though the, the kind of, uh, yeah, as you will see, the, the case of uh, uh, supergroups have, will have some uh, uh, qualitative, qualitative differences uh, from the case of uh, ordinary uh, link groups. So uh, yeah, so, so in this, for the case of SL2 uh, bar one, we want to associate a, a pair of uh, complex variables for each vertex. And uh, so we want to integrate over them over some contour. 
and uh, so we insert a certain rational function where de degree of i is a degree of degree of, uh, of a vertex. So, you know, this vertex has a degree three, this vertex has a degree one, and this has degree uh, two. And uh, uh, so formally, this can be written uh, later. The, 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 so we also insert in the integral as a full link uh, kind of indefinite theta function associated uh, to uh, uh, M inverse in this way, in this particular way. But of course, this is uh, un un unlike in the case of ordinary, uh, ordinary algebra, this is never convergent. So, so one cannot define it in this way in, in any case. And so what we actually uh, sh should interpret this is that uh, this, the, the, this formula is that we, what we want to do, we want to make some choice of contour and corresponding to the choice of contour, we make an expansion of this rational function in certain chamber. And then we just take uh, this integral uh, means that it's like a constant term of, of this thing. But of course, not, uh, not for, e e even, even after that uh, kind of prescription, not for all choices of contour. Contours, this is, uh, will give you well-defined Q-series. So, uh, so there's a question, like what is, it, what is, it, uh, what is the conditions of the, the, the choice of contour of gamma, so this actually produces well-defined Q-series. And, uh, uh, and, and if there is a choice you can do, is it unique? So one can give a, a rather technical, but a very specific kind of algorithmic answer to this question, which uh, yeah, not, I don't want to go into too much details, but uh, so yeah, one can formulate as, as a condition on the existence of a tour that the, as is uh, minus M inverse matrix is uh, what can be called weakly copositive. And so this is a kind of a bit different condition to this weak, weakly uh, negativity condition, which we, which, which was, uh, which we had for the ordinary algebra. And uh, the good news is that if uh, one, can, uh, if such contour exists, there are actually only two choices. And they actually, they give the same result. So this is uh, uh, uniquely defined. It gives it gives a unique uh, Q series, and uh, so so this is a Q series uh, with with integer coefficients up to uh, integer powers up to some probably overall overall shift uh, overall rational power of Q, which is uh, invariantly can be formulated as a linking pairing between like these labels B and C. So the labels B and C uh, from the point of view of this uh, uh, linking matrix, they they live in co kernel, but more invariantly. As they can be so the element of the first homology group of the three manifold with initial coefficients. So we we uh, uh, we define this uh, Q series uh, in terms of a plumbing graph, but if, but in principle it's known that the plumbing graphs uh, can realize the different plumbing graphs can realize the same three manifold. Uh, well, the, the different parameters graph can realize homomorphic three manifold. And uh, so if, if this is something, uh, actually, if it's a topological invariant, then we, we should check that this, uh, uh, the, the, the result is not independent. And it is known that the, what is the uh, kind of moves on the, on the, plumbing, on the plumbing graphs uh, uh, can be made so that, so that uh, 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 so the so the two two different plumbings realizing homomorphic manifold uh, uh, yeah yeah it it it, 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 it is known the set of moves uh, which uh, which which uh, uh, which relates the the two plum yeah the two plumbing uh, graphs realizing the same homomorphic manifold and one can check that these uh, these uh, this formula, although it explicitly depends on the plumbing data, is actually gives you an environment. And moreover, this condition on M is also preserved uh, under this uh, uh, under this moves. Okay, let me let me uh, give you some examples just to get a feeling what kind of Q series uh, one obtains in this ways. And uh, uh, so, okay, the simplest example you can imagine is a three sphere. So there is a first homology is zero. So there is actually the, there is no there is only a single label. So in general, I remind you, so the label of pairs of each one. So it's just a single uh, Q series, and uh, it is something uh, uh, actually familiar. This is what is known Lambert series, uh, the series of Lambert type, and this is a generating function of uh, the number of divisors of them. 
And there's a generalization for land spaces LP1. So in this case, this, uh, so, so th now we have uh, uh, H1 is isomorphic to ZP. And uh, so, so the pair of elements of the ZP, uh, the Z hats, uh, turn out to be generating functions for the certain numbers, uh, so, uh, so numbers which answer a question for, the, for this counting problem. So it's a count uh, pairs R and S, which is fine. So they, they, they product to them and they are equal to B and C respectively model of P. So let me make remarks that this is already of the level, on this level of simple manifolds like land spaces. This is very different from uh, the Z hats uh, for SLN, which were just all around polynomials in Q1 of P. But here, this is some uh, full fledged and non trivial tree series. And also, one can notice something uh, similar, which is a, a bit of kind of a puzzle, or maybe can see these numbers. Uh, actually, they coincide with uh, early characteristic of, of a model space of M SO3 instantons on LP1, the same LP1 as we have here, times R, propagating between uh, flat connections library by B plus minus C, which are computed by Austin in 1990. Okay, so uh, let me consider something more, uh, more, com more, more involved. So consider, for example, like for three manifolds with three exceptional fibers. So in terms of plumbing, they can always be realized by a star-shaped graph with uh, three rays, something like this. And one can argue that for, in this case, this uh, Q series, they can always can be given as a, uh, as, a, as a linear combination of the series of the following form for various, for, for some parameters, alpha, beta, gamma, A and B. And uh, so, for example, if you, uh, the exist equation from Pagai homology sphere, which corresponds to this plumbing graph, it gives you something like this. And uh, again, so if you want to compare it to the case of SL2, in that case, uh, something was, uh, the Q series was a, a bit of a different form. So this was a kind of, uh, the powers was rather sparse and the, 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 uh, the signs were alternating. And this was uh, what is known at uh, uh, Q series of a uh, class of, uh, uh, false um, model forms. Sorry, false theta, false theta function. Okay, now, uh, uh, yeah, so I want to address uh, uh, some properties, uh, some analytic properties of this Q series. So, uh, so for, the, for technical assumption, let me assume that H1 is zero, so there will be just a single, uh, single Z hat. And uh, consider its expansion, uh, in terms of h bar, which is which is logarithm uh, minus logarithm of q, or proportional to tau, equivalently. Uh, so in general, there will be some singular part plus uh, uh, the sum of positive powers of h bar. Uh, so let me know that m not, do not necessarily run over integers; they can also run over half integers. In general. And then we can define a Borel transform as the following. Uh, series in Xi, where we divided by coefficient by gamma divided by m plus one. And uh, uh, the general kind of uh, 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 knowledge tells us that if uh, this z hat, for which we can see a simple expansion, were originated from some sort of path integral of analytic continuous transformation theory, then we expect uh, a certain uh, properties of this, uh, certain nice properties of this parallel transform. So even these, these are asymptotic expansions in general, this, this should be uh, this series, uh, Borel transform series, should uh, have a finite radius convergence, and moreover, they should be one should be able to analytically continue them beyond this uh, radius of convergence. And uh, the, the only the, uh, the possible singularities uh, that can appear once one does this analytic continuation should be positioned at uh, four pi squared times s, where s modulo one should be the value of a transformers invariant of flat connections on a three manifold. So I'm going to ask the question: Is this the case for uh, SL21. Uh, at least uh, in some simple cases. So, so okay, the simplest case is it would be S3. And here, it's, the, so anyone can see that this uh, Lambert series, which the simple expression of Lambert series is known. And it's, uh, uh, well, it's simple, but it's still non trivial. So, these are not a convergent expansion. This is a asymptotic expansion. And it's rather easy to analyze this Borel transform and see that the singularities are positioned at four pi squared times s, where s is integer, which is uh, model one is just uh, zero. And this is okay because, well, the only flat connection is a trivial 
for connection S3, and this is just in terms of the lifts of, uh, of the same tree of that connection. Again, this is quite different for the case of SLN, where this, uh, for SL3, this Q series was actually, like, this was, as I mentioned, there was Laurent polynomial in Q, and this was actually entire function in H bar. And there was no non-trivial resurgence here. And uh, so one can also make the same analysis for uh, Zephyr manifold with three exceptional fibers using this uh, property that, uh, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, that uh, they can be, uh, the Q series can be realized as a linear combination of Q series of the following type. So it's enough, uh, it's sufficient to first uh, do a generalized analysis for this type of Q series for general alpha, beta, gamma, A and B. And uh, okay, this is not something unlike uh, the Lambert series. This is not something which you can find in the literature, at least we couldn't. And so one has to do some work and one can do the analysis using Ellen McLaren's summation formula. And one can find that this uh, has single, the Barrel transform uh, can analyze the, the asymptotics of the coefficients of the asymptotic expansion of this Q series. Uh, one can uh, deduce that the Borel transform has singularities at uh, these points, 4 pi square s, where s is either of this form or this form, where k is integer. So if you try to plug in these results for, uh, for example, Poincare homology sphere, so at least naively there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, singularities from all of this uh, contribution of all different f's in the sum, in, in, this, uh, uh, in the linear combination. But one can show this actually there are some material constellations. The only, uh, so many of these singularities they actually fake, they cancel out, and uh, what is left is just uh, uh, singularities when s is zero, one, 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 one divided by 120, and 49 divided by 120, model one. And this is, uh, they correspond to uh, value of is functional of SU2 uh, flat connection, where SU2 can be a subgroup, uh, SU2 is a subgroup of SU21. Okay, so uh, now uh, I want to, uh, yeah, I want to, uh, to say something about relation to, uh, to certain quantum invariants known in mathematics literature uh, associated to a quantum uh, version of uh, quantum, quantum SL21. So first, uh, let me, uh, it is known that the, if one tries to use the standard Richter Ferrari construction to the uh, topological invariants, uh, for topological invariants for quantum SL21, this actually leads to trivial invariants, in particular because the quantum dimension will vanish. So one has to do something uh, different, and uh, in particular, one can, what one can do is apply, is a, is a kind of use the notion sort of modified trace, which uh, makes this quantum dimension, in particular, makes quantum dimension non, non trivial and use the, the general construction of uh, Constantino, Gear, and Pachero Miran applied uh, uh, to the case, uh, uh, which is applied to, uh, so this is a, a general construction which one can apply to certain non-simple categories. In this case, this non-simple category is a, is a category of uh, representations that find certain conditions of uh, what is called unrolled uh, version of uh, quantum SL21. When we take Q to, well, there is some uh, substantive normalization, but if we take Q such that Q, uh, square root of Q is a uh, order root of unity, and so the particular case uh, of this corresponding to SL21 was worked out in, uh, by Hahn. And uh, so in, in a sense, in a roughly sense, this, this invariance uh, can be sort of a normalized version of the usual uh, chicken simons partition function, which makes, uh, makes this uh, non-trivial, makes invariant non-trivial. At the end of the day, there is a, there is a certain formula uh, for an invariant of uh, uh, the following Form. It's actually not invariant of just so of a three manifolds. First, of course, it depends on the choice of k of the integer k, but it's also uh, not just a matter of three manifolds, but three manifolds colored by uh, omega, where omega is the element of, of, the, of the certain set. So, uh, so you start you, you have you start with the first homology, uh, first cohomology of a three manifolds with coefficient being c mod z times c mod z, but you have to exclude uh, some subsets, uh, so some su subgroups. And so in particular, you, you want to exclude a subgroup where the first component is actually valid in the uh, first homology with uh, half integer coefficients. And you want to do the same for the second component. And you also want to do the same for the diagonal. Anyways, this is just some technical details, but uh, 
So how roughly uh, this omega, this weight omega, uh, sorry, this uh, color omega enters in the construction. So this can be answered as follows. So in general, these uh, representations, which one considers here, they have weights uh, in, uh, in uh, C times C, uh, lovely by two complex numbers. And what we do when we, when we, when we do uh, kind of, uh, for, for each, as in the usual, uh, kind of similar to the usual Rashid Kim Turayev construction, when we do a surgery, we need to sum over uh, some representations for each link component. And what we do here, so for, if you take a particular link component, we want to make sum only over representations such that the weight equals to, uh, mod, weights model of Z times Z, they equal to the value of this omega evaluated uh, on a meridian uh, surrounding this link component. Okay. Uh, again, at the end of the day, there is like, some combinatorial formula for this environment, which allows uh, you to calculate this. And, uh, and uh, so one can make uh, the following, so we want to make the following conjecture. So that uh, when, again, M3 is a rational homology sphere, this Q series at hot uh, are related to, uh, to this um, non simple quantum invariance by the following formula. So it may be a look a bit complicated, but essentially this is just uh, what we want to do. We want to take a certain linear combination of the Z hats and we want to take Q, the limit when Q goes to, uh, uh, to, 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 to a root of unity. And there will be some universal overall coefficients involving uh, uh, the Meister torsion. And uh, uh, okay, so let me make some comments. Uh, here. So before, uh, you may notice that before actually my Z hats for SL21 was were elaborated by a pair of elements of uh, uh, H1. But here instead actually I want to, uh, to, for them to be labeled by the elements of H1 of, of the first cohomology with coefficient being C mod Z instead. And this is possible because for rational homology, first cohomology group with in C mod Z is actually uh, can be identified with the first cohomology coefficient in Q. But this in turn uh, can be actually uh, is a isomorphic, uh, is there is a particular choice for isomorphism of this group to H1, the first homology group with integer coefficient by using uh, the linking pairing, which is non-degenerate pairing on the first homology to Q mod Z. So in this isomorphism, one can instead label uh, the hats by elements of uh, first homology with coefficient in C mod Z. And then roughly this uh, formula can be stood that, uh, so first we do essentially Fourier transform with respect to this B and C, uh, pair of B and C when we pass the variables Q and beta, the dual variables Q and beta. And then we uh, do again Fourier transform with respect to beta and gamma, but we also insert this uh, uh, quadratic, uh, quadratic term depending on K or level and uh, the linking pair between beta and gamma. Uh, okay, so okay, so let me uh, mention mention some uh, kind of uh, open questions and possible future directions. So as you as you also probably could notice that in all simple examples, uh, as all coefficients except possibly the, the, the constant term turn out to be positive. So is there so is it so first of all is it one is it true more generally? It's actually not so easy to answer because like to, to generate, it's not obvious why this should be true. Uh, at least we don't know explanations so far, but it's actually hard to go, to go into kind of complicated examples to calculate many terms to, to check it uh, kind of experimentally. Yeah. It becomes uh, a bit type time consuming. And uh, uh, first and the second, yeah, oh yeah, of course it's natural to ask if there are some categorification of this Q series. Uh, similar, for example, to one uh, bar one case. So of course there is a physics, uh, uh, kind of physics prediction, uh, uh, some sort of BPS uh, spectrum uh, prediction for what should be a categorization, but uh, again, maybe uh, since in this case, you, it's well understood for U1 bar one, and this is a subgroup here of SU2 bar one, uh, we might, one might come up with uh, some sort of better understanding, some mathematical, better mathematical understanding. Or maybe some combinatorial definition of this uh, quantification. And uh, also, in principle, one can expect, uh, the other point is one can expect some relation, when the, when the supergroup is uh, by SL and bar N, one can expect a certain relation uh, between instant on counter and on M3 times R, 
for this Q series and uh, some generative function with some four characteristic of instantons here. This is because, uh, so in this case, we have n brains on one side of uh, d, 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 d phi brain and the same number of brains, d3 brains on the other side. And there is a phase, physically there is a phase when we can separate uh, this uh, d5 brain and uh, then this uh, d3 brains, they become just supported on this m3 times r. And of course, uh, it's obvious, uh, it's also, it's natural to ask uh, that is there some generalization to manifolds with uh, boundaries in particular to those boundaries. Okay, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I, yeah, I'm ahead of my time, but uh, anyway, let me, let me just stop here. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you very much, um, Pavel. Uh, I'll just unmute the participants so they can give you a round of, um, of applause. <laughs> Okay, and um, now to the questions. Uh, we've already got um, two questions. Uh, maybe Edward Witten first. Okay, so thank you for the talk, Pavel. I had two kinds of questions. First, a very quick one, and then a sort of a category of questions. So the quick question is, you had those three manifolds that are gotten by surgery on a certain class of graphs. Are they actually Seifert manifolds? Uh, I know Seifert manifolds can be constructed that way, but I'm questioning whether all manifolds in the class you were considering there are Seifert manifolds. Uh, Pavel, you just still muted for a second, Pavel. Um, Sorry, Pavel, you're just going to have to unmute yourself and answer again. Can, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you now, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Zyphert manifolds are the ones which uh, can be realized by plumbing uh, with uh, star shaped plumbing, plumbings. With what? Uh, the plumbing of a star shape. When we only have, uh, 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 well, uh, of this type where there is one node of high valency and there, uh, uh, there are some rays going in, in, in some directions. These are Zyphert manifolds. Uh, are you sure that um, more general ones are, of the class you consider are not Seifert manifolds? Well, if they, if they, I mean, they can be, if, you, if, one can, if one can find a, a sequence of moves to bring them in this form, they're also Seifert. But if there is no sequence of moves which, which brings them to this uh, star shape, they're not, in general, they're not Seifert. So Seifert manifolds have the property that the three manifold invariant can be expressed just in terms of the S matrix the SL2Z mapping in genus yes. one, and not the R matrix. Is, yes, the same yes. true, is the same true for this whole class of manifolds? Yes, yes. I'm a little surprised. Well, that's obviously a drastic simplification to express them just in terms of the S matrix. And I'm a little surprised. It doesn't really quite contradict anything I know, but I'm a little surprised that there are man three manifolds that aren't ciphered manifolds with that property. So, okay, I can't say more though. Um, my general class of questions is the following. You described a number of constructions algebraically, but as a physicist, one would like to know if there's a path integral representation that corresponds to it. As one example, you had three manifolds colored by certain data and associated with that, you would give invariance of the group SLN slash M. What crosses my mind is that if you take the group SLN slash M, Pi one of that group is Z. So in the language of Seiberg and others, it has a one, such a gauge theory has a one form global symmetry and you could couple to a background field. So an obvious question is whether your invariants colored by certain data are what you would have gotten by coupling the one form global symmetry to a background field. But whether that's the right interpretation or not, one would want to have a path integral interpretation of what you were doing. Uh, well, you can comment on that and then I'll give another example. Well, yeah, I mean, this, I mean we haven't uh, worked out this, yeah, this is a good, but, but I believe this indeed should be, uh, I think there is such understanding, uh, not only for example, for uh, the case of U1 bar one case, and it should be something similar here, yes. But uh, okay. I mean- That would be illuminating. Otherwise it sounds like something pulled out of thin air with no context. 
at least as a physicist, it's much more interesting if there's a natural context for the formulas. Another example, uh, okay. So the volumes of the supergroups you're considering are zero and that causes some invariance to be uninteresting if you follow the standard definitions. Then you mentioned alternative definitions with modified traces and such. Again, it would be, I think, more interesting if there's a path integral interpretation of what that is. I actually can only suggest what it is in a special case. Instead of three mount hole invariants, you can consider not invariants in S3. For a compact Lie group, it doesn't matter very much if you work in S3 or R3. The two, the two sets of invariants differ by a factor of a sort of renormalized volume of the group, which is just a non-zero constant. But for a supergroup, that volume can be, that factor can be zero. And so it makes a big difference if you're in R3 or S3. So not the most general case, but special cases of the not invariants that you would get with modified algebraic recipes simply correspond physically to working in R3 rather than S3. So for example, when you had three manifold invariants, an obvious thing you could try to do to get rid of a trivial problem with the volume of the group being zero is to remove a point from your three manifold and project it to infinity so that you have a non-compact three manifold that's asymptotic to R3. I don't know if that would give the things you were talking about for three manifold invariants, but if it did, that would be, to my thinking, more, well, more illuminating than saying that there's some crazy algebraic formula that gives three manifold invariants. That could lead to up. I mean, yeah, the path integral or the, the precise path integral uh, interpretation still, yeah, still uh, kind of, um, yeah, we don't have it, but yeah, indeed, I, yeah, at least uh, naively one can expect this omega is, uh, uh, for example, omega here is uh, correspond to a certain uh, background, uh, turning on some background field. But the, uh, what I suggested was the only background field I could see. But, Sorry. Okay. Maybe I should stop there. There might be other questions. Okay, thanks. Um, in that case, um, we also have a question from Sergey Google. If you just want to unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. Uh, hi, Pavel. Uh, thank you. This was uh, very nice. Um, I have a quick question about uh, the Q series nature of the answers. Um, do they coincide or relate to characters of any vertex algebras based on supergroups? Uh, that could shed some light on the nature of Yeah, it's a good question, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Well, at least uh, nothing uh, what I would uh, heard, but I'm, I'm very far from being an expert on uh, uh, some logarithmic UAE, but. Uh, well, I mean, let me, uh, okay, so one, one, one thing I can say, maybe it's uh, like, for example, this, uh, uh, so the, 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 the case of, for example, land spaces and uh, S3, so this is kind of has a very kind of rough uh, uh, quantum, quantum uh, model of property. So this may have a chance to, to relate to some sort of character of some bad, bad enough DOA. Uh, but for example, already for this case, it's, uh, well, first of all, it's, yeah, it's not, it's like at least from these resurgence properties, uh, this uh, for, for the Zyber manifold from resurgence properties, it seems that there is no, like uh, no even remotely nice uh, model of properties. Okay, um, maybe uh, we can come back to uh, Edward, who has another question. Uh, Edward, you just need to unmute yourself. I just wanted to clarify the question about your surgery on graphs. Um, when you say that generically those are not ciphered manifolds, you're considering ciphered manifolds were the base of genus G, not necessarily genus. No, no, I'm here. I'm considering. Uh, I'm saying this uh, that uh, this base being sphere. Okay, but. My question was whether general manifolds that you considered are ciphered manifolds with the base of genus G. I suspect they are, I'm totally non-expert on the three manifold theory, but I suspect they are for the following reason. General ciphered manifolds 
which are just three manifolds with what's called a semi-free U1 action, a U1 action that's generically free. Um, those are th the ones in which Chern-Simons theory can be studied by localization. And that leads to simple formulas, which manifestly only involve the S-matrix. And the chern simons invariants on those manifolds are then much, much simpler than the case of a generic three manifold. And the ones, uh, again, I'm extremely forgetful, but as far as I remember, general surgeries on the class of graphs you drew also always lead to formulas involving the S matrix. And I'm just pretty sure that those classes of manifolds coincide. And I, I think it's important to know that for the physical interpretation, because you see, when the three manifold has a circle built into it because it's a ciphered manifold, that gives a lot of possibilities for dual transformations to other pictures that aren't present generically. So whether the base had gene of zero wasn't important in my question. What the question was really getting at was whether you were asked, discussing the same class of three manifolds where turn simons theory can be treated by localization. Well, there is a certain uh, circle action, but I, I don't think, well, at least my knowledge tells me that there's not always uh, generically, uh, it's, it's just a Zephyr manifolds with some other base. Uh, because, because uh, I mean, if, Hang on, hang on, Edward, uh, you just uh, muted again. Uh, do you want to just unmute yourself and? Am I muted? No, okay, yes. If you know there's an S1 action, that means they are ciphered manifolds. That's what a ciphered manifold is. It's a three manifold, well, except for very special cases. Generically, a three manifold with an S1 action is a ciphered manifold. But regardless from my question, it's not important, even if there are exceptions. Three manifolds with S1 actions are the ones that can be studied by localization. So if you know your three manifolds have S1 actions, that means you're talking about the three manifolds that can be studied by localization. That's what I was trying to ask in my question. Pavel, I don't know whether you want to, whether you're thinking or want to reply. Well, I'm thinking if I can No, I, okay, I, I don't think it's actually, a sorry, what I said about, there is no uh, global S1 action because uh, yeah, essentially we, 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 when we can understand these plumbing manifolds on Jenny, so we have a kind of uh, different basis. So we, what we can do, like for, as a quadratic manifold, we can uh, like uh, if, if it's just just like start with some circle federation, we can instead uh, cut out some fiber and glue in uh, fiber with SL2 transformation. But we can also uh, uh, start with a, a pair of bases. Of pair of base uh, circle formation glue the fibers together using some SL2Z transformation. And but this is this is L2Z transformation, which actually will uh, change the circle on the base and the circle on the fiber. So actually, yeah, I probably was wrong that, that there is a global, always global S1 action for for general plumbing. Yeah, maybe I might maybe I'm terribly mistaken, but uh, I, I thought that these are not in general. Uh, equivalent to to just Zyphert. and maybe someone can correct me. O only only when the when, only when the uh, uh, yeah, only only when the uh, the uh, uh, well for, for if you consider three the case of three three plumbings only when they they are star shape. Like if it's not a tree plumbing, indeed, if there are some cycles, then it can be currently understood as a, as a, as a Zyphert manifold with a hygienous base. Well, um, I think Edward wanted to say something again. Yeah, please just unmute yourself and. Uh... 
we'll give this another minute or so and then I'll just move on to another question that was hanging about. But Edward, please uh, go ahead if you wanted to reply to this. No? Okay. I'll just lower the hand then. Um, so there was another question from Mina Ganagic. You want to mute yourself? Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Pavel, for, for a wonderful talk. Um, I, I had a comment and, uh, and a question. So um, what Edward said about um, the relation of uh, S3 versus R3 is, is almost certainly correct uh, because uh, if you were to consider uh, not invariance in U1 slash 1 theory, you have to cut the knot, which I think means that you have to take one point of it away to infinity. Uh, mean, otherwise, the invariance simply vanished. Um, but uh, my question was whether, um, uh, so whether uh, you understand the need for rewriting the theory in terms of z hat also in the u1 slash 1 case. Um, is, is, does, does that arise as well? Of course, the u1 slash 1 case is so much simpler, but um, ha has this been understood? I think, yeah, so one can uh, relate essentially z hats uh, to. Well, up to Fourier transform in that case, that hats are essentially just torsion. Or, or yeah. But in